Let's talk a bit about MIDI program changes, how they're assigned from articulations and expressions and recorded. Now, I found they're a bit unpredictable, but this is uh, perhaps some tips for your best chance of success with them. What I've done here is uh, bring up a instance of a soft synth, absinthe, and I've set the thing up so that I've loaded up some tra some patch on every program change and I'll set the default to the snare sound on program change one and some oscillator sound on two and some kind of harmonic sawtooth like thing on program change number three. I've then set up a set of tra a track <clears throat> in Overture. And what I'll do is go to my track inspector. I want to do this on the right per track and select an articulation, let's say staccato. Then I'll go down here and I'll want to change the staccato. You'll notice I have it's coming in at note start and then going off at a note end on some other program change. So what I'll do is at note start for this, I'll set that to come in on program change number two. And at note end, I'll go back to my number one snare sound. Now it's very important that I also look at this clock offset because at note start, I want the program change to occur before my note ons and maybe other some other MIDI data in the stream so that the program change has time to come in and set up uh, for the note on. I found that minus 20 clocks works pretty well for some of the sounds. You, you're probably going to have to tweak that to the sound or the program change that you're working with, depending upon what it is. So what I'll do now is that I have this staccato set. I'll set a couple notes. Remember, with articulations, I want to tag them right on the note. And if all goes well here, I should hear that change for the two staccatos and go back to the snare on the uh, regular note. Oops, I didn't have it set to my snare to begin with, so let's set the snare as a default. Ah, that's exactly what I expected, okay. What would happen if I went on this and for this one say, oops, let me get that staccato and let me change the offset of that to zero, which is a lot of what the defaults might have. I don't know why. Oops. Ah, see? That one, the offset was not set correctly uh, and I basically got my staccato sound because staccato is set to make duration of 50%. So the staccato part, the duration part worked, but it didn't, the program change didn't work. That makes perfect sense to me. Okay, let's try, um, let's try it on another one. Let's say an accent mark, but now let's set this one to uh, change to program change three at note start. And on note end, we'll go back to the snare sound and my add start clocking. Let me put that one to minus 20 as well. We'll apply and bring over a couple accents and see how that works. Ah, okay. So it, it's doing exactly what I what I think and hoped it would. Uh, great. So what is this telling you? Make sure you pay particular attention to the clocking offset and tweak it uh, and test it for each uh, program change that you are trying to do. Okay, now let's go through and do the same thing, setting it up on an expression. So let's go and select something. Let's say pizzicato. We'll do the same kind of thing. I'll go down here, I'll look for my program change. Let me set that to that number three sound. That's pretty easy to hear. And 
then what we'll do is uh, set it off by minus 20 clocks again. If you notice, there's no uh, node off uh, setting here because with this expression, we'd assume that expression is going to continue uh, until I have some new change coming in. It's not like an articulation that's per note. All right, now let's pull over a pizzicato and put it on here, say. And if you notice, I don't want the red line after the note. I want the red line before the note. So, okay. And uh, something I noticed, uh, if I go and I look at that pizzicato, the program changes that to two, not to the three I have here. I think that's a bug uh, because if I set this to four, right, apply and bring over another pizzicato over here, and look at that one, it's at the three. So for some reason, the uh, expressions are set one less than the, uh, the setting that you have here. And again, remember this, these names are just the general MIDI names. I don't care about those. All right, so uh, what I have here, if we set this to two, that should be our oscillator-like sound. And now we have this set to three and that should be our sawtooth-like sound. Let's make sure he's set before the note. And let's see what that does. Hmm. That didn't seem to do what I wanted it to. And uh, let's go. Oh, well, that's set after. That got set after the note. So we got to make sure that's before, you know, and we should let's, we could put it well before in these two cases. Make sure it has plenty of time to trigger. And oops, I don't want that. Let's now. Ah, there it is. So when you're when you're using uh, them on expressions, maybe don't put it so too close. Give it time uh, for that those ticks to to kick in if you can. Let's see what happens even if I put them really right before. Ah, even though I have it set to. Uh, Oh, it's kind of hard to say there. Uh, I don't really see the uh, the the offset uh, when I click on the note. I have to go back to my setting on the right. I wonder if that's uh, something that's missing here. I really need to be able to see what the offset is there. Hmm. Program changes are a bit predictable, but at least I know now if I give it enough time on each of those uh, expressions, it looks like I'm in business. So just make sure you have you know the red line a bit away from the note uh, if you want to tag um, MIDI changes on that, especially program change. All right, final thing. I can record these. So if I want to record program changes, I'll get rid of these because they are confusing. And what I want then is to set myself up in the piano roll uh, and make sure I'm set to record program change down here. And in my record function, I want to make sure that I record all except notes because I want to keep the notes where they are only record MIDI data. And now what I can do is um, just press program changes on my keyboard. And that seems to work OK. And uh, you can see it records the program changes. Now, of course, if I press the program change after the note starts, it's not going to take effect until the next note. So they seem to be working, but program changes are very dependent on note on where they're placed in relationship to the note on. So I hope that helped a little bit. A little bit unpredictable, 
but uh, a few tips there might get you uh, almost to where you need to be.